Thank you, David, and what a marvelous sight it is to behold a wonderful witness to our Catholic faith in action. <clears throat> Friends, I'm pleased to welcome you all to this launch of the diocesan strategy called Walking with Refugees and People Seeking Protection. This is an initiative that has been developed in partnership with several agencies working in the field, Jesuit Ref Refugee Services, St. Vincent de Paul Society, Sydney Alliance, Refugee Council of Australia, Catholic Alliance for People Seeking Protection, and the House of Welcome, whose new pre premises in Granville I was privileged to have blessed yesterday. We aim to galvanize a faith-filled response from the Catholic people of Parramatta, or as um, David put it, the, the Pew Power. And hopefully from also the response from the rest of Australia in order to do what Pope Francis says, namely to replace a culture of fear and indifference with a culture of encounter and acceptance. I think it is fitting that this diocese takes a lead on the issue. We are the most ethnically diverse diocese and region in Australia. Migrants and refugees bring energy, drive, and dynamism to Western Sydney. They also contribute hugely to the renewal and revitalization of the church. So much so that our diocese boasts the highest participation rate in Australia. Where would we be without the vibrant faith and the strong community spirit of migrants and refugees? One of them happens to be speaking to you now. You can blame Pope Francis for putting a cute champa as the leader of a Catholic diocese in Australia. And I suspect there might be a Jesuitic craftiness in uh, my appointment uh, to um, be a bishop uh, in a region of Australia which is politically sensitive to the issue of maritime, maritime arrivals. In Vietnamese we say uh, use venom, to, to treat venom. Is that a similar saying in English? Oh, that, like my beard? Like fire with fire. I hope I have some fire in my belly. To many of us who care about the direction of our country, this question would be asked of us with regularity and intensity. Where has the decent fair income Betting for the battlers, country of ours, gone. Where has it gone? In a generation, we have gone from the universally admire, a generous, hospitable, daring, courageous country to one of the most pilloried nation one of the most pilloried nation, perhaps a little bit less pilloried than President Trump. However, it is still a very pilloried nation in terms of our policy towards asylum seekers and refugees. The New York Times wrote a scathing criticism against our country's policy. It says, the ruthlessly effective policy was inhumane, of dubious legality, and strikingly at odds with the country's tradition of welcoming people fleeing persecution and war. It said it would be unconscionable for other countries around the globe to adopt or consider adopting similar policies. And yet, 
at that stage, they hadn't heard of the recent invention of cutting benefits uh, to asylum seekers, leaving them on the streets, starving. That's what the decision, the policy intends to do. We have reached the bottom of the barrel. The, you know, the New York Times isn't the only institution that thinks there is something inherently unconscionable and inhumane about the politics of asylum seekers in our beloved country. Even the national or rather international community with many human rights organizations criticize Australia's asylum seekers policies. This once model country for generous welcome of migrants and refugees is now criticized for its harshness and inhumanity towards them. And so, friends, we're here to say loud and clear, not in our name, not in our name. Not in our name as Australian, and not in our name certainly as Catholic Australian. It is in our DNA to reach out to our, to our fellow human beings in need, to treat the stranger with dignity and humanity, to welcome the outcast, the, the marginalized. It's the texture of Christianity. But friends, Let's be under no illusions about the change we seek. It is not primarily the change in government and politics. Rather, it is a change in attitude. It's an attitudinal shift on the part of every Australian. And I would say that um, such an attitudinal change rarely comes through appealing to progressive section of the ruling class. It will come, I believe, with the movement from below, from the grassroots, that challenges the anti-refugee, anti-asylum seeker racism from above. I'm so pleased that we have this kind of grassroots action today. Renewal and creativity often comes from the margins. Like in the gospel, that there is that beautiful story of the two women, the two midwives, Shipra and Pua, who took a stands. Who took a stands. They're the first or one of the first people to undertake civil disobedience. They defied the power of the throne. They defied Pharaoh. Because it was considered unconscionable to them to do what Pharaoh demanded. Australia, often galvanized by popular pressure, rose to the challenge in the past with its generous embrace of refugees. It proved itself exceptionally, and I mean exceptionally, courageous during the Vietnamese exodus. It accepted an unprecedented number of Asian refugees for the first time in its history. And Australia changed for the better, changed for the better, as it ha always has, as it always has with each successive wave of immigrants and refugees. Australia is what it is today, a marvelous country because of the refugees and, and migrants' love of freedom and fundamental human values, their energy and drive and dynamism. 
Australia is what it is today because of that determination for a better future. When you have that determination and resilience, nothing can come in your way. And so we honor, I contend, the legacy of this great nation, not by excessive protectionism, isolation, and defense of our privilege at all costs. Rather, we make it greater by our concern and care for migrants and refugees and asylum seekers. In that spirit of compassion and daring and solidarity, that has marked our nation even from its beginning, even from its um, inception. Christians are countercultural, cultural, and prophetic insofar as we dare to name and critique the anti gospel attitudes in society and in the world around us. We seek to reframe like Shipra and Pua the harsh and unjust and inhumane realities that many experience into that alternative vision of hope and promote values that will lead to the fulfillment of that vision. The way to a culture of encounter and love by a radical discipleship of compassion, solidarity and service we accompany the victims of injustice in the journey to freedom. As disciples, we are committed to building a better, a more humane, welcoming, and inclusive society, not by giving in to fear, to suspicion, but by fostering that culture of encounter, respect, and acceptance. Pope Francis exhorts us to see in refugees and asylum seekers as our brothers and sisters who, like us, are in search of justice, freedom, and dignity, and opportunity for development. And he writes, more than in the past, the gospel of mercy troubles our consciences, prevents us from taking the suffering of others for granted and points out the way of responding which ground us in the virtues of faith, hope, and love find practical expression in works of spiritual and corporal mercy. So friends, through this diocesan strategy, I encourage you to enact the culture of encounter, welcome, and, ac and acceptance in practical, personal, and communal ways. Many parishes and organizations are actively assisting asylum seekers and refugees. It is a great opportunity for us to make a difference and to together influence government policy in relation to refugee and asylum seekers. As Christians, we cannot remain content with status quo, especially that status quo is less than what God wants of us as individuals and as a community. Australia, I keep saying, is a wonderful country, but where it is in terms of its treatment of asylum seekers, the homeless, the indigenous peoples, to name but a few, should galvanize us into action. We cannot be the salt and the leaven if we allow our conscience to be desensitized by inequality, injustice, and inhumanity in our society. And so I conclude with the men and women of Woodwill, the citizens of our marvelous country. Let us build a better society and a better world. May I endeavor to replace the culture of fear and indifference with that of encounter and acceptance be brought to fulfillment in accordance with God's vision for the fullness of life and love for all.
Thank you.